microwave oven that is not heating, but it is also not buzzing. Here's the symptoms. I've got a glass of water in there. Power is on, so it's not the main power fuse. Let's go ahead and start it. Now, notice that the light in the microwave came on. The timer is running. It thinks everything is fine, but you hear anything? There is no buzzing, and the turntable is not spinning in there either. So, I was a little bit confused how the light could be on, and they think it's running, and nothing's happening. After looking at the schematics, my theory is that one of the two door switches in here is broken. There's two door switches in here. I have to take this whole thing out. Um, so first I'm going to have to remove this trim kit. There's screws in all four corners. I'm going to have to pull this microwave out, open the microwave up, and then see what's happening. And again, there's no heating going on. There's no buzzing. So um, it's not the diode. It is not the magnetron. Um, so uh, let, me, let me open this up and see what I can find. Being the ever so clever company, they have this security bit here. Um, I don't have an exact security bit, but this Harbor Freight bit set has this little bit here, which just so happens to fit into these slots here like that. And this Harbor Freight bit set, I don't know, goes for about five bucks or something like that. Okay, this is the insides of the microwave. Before I did anything, came over here and I shorted out those two terminals. And as I suspected, there was nothing there, no voltage, because uh, the interlock seems to have failed, so it's not getting any voltage. So there are three switches here. Uh, this is interlock one. This is primary interlock two. Those are controlled by the door. When I swing it open and closed, and I think one of these has failed, and then this is a some sort of a, a interlock with a fuse built in. Okay, so what I've done is I've removed the two wires that was there. I've connected up two alligator clips to my voltmeter and continuity meter right now. Circuit is open. When I close the door, now it's zero ohms, so it's buzzing. So this switch seems to be working fine. Okay, so here's the second interconnect switch. Both of these switches should be closed when the door closes. You can see one it's a little hard to see that second latch. Okay, so these latches close in here. And again, we have zero ohms right now. It's an open circuit when I close the door. And as I suspected, it's not closing. When I looked at the schematic, only someone with the, who understands schematics could see that what happens when you close this, this top switch is it turns the oven light on. <laughs> the bottom switch is what actually drives the magnetron and the turntable motor. Some people might be fooled and think, oh, it's just the turntable motor. So anyways, it looks like this is the switch that needs to be replaced. So hopefully that will solve the problem. And by the way, these terminals on here are very hard to remove. They're actually um, special terminals that are angled and they clip in there so they don't accidentally fall out. So don't be surprised, it takes a lot of force to get those terminals off of there. Okay, and here's how you remove it. There's a screw that goes up here, and a screw that goes down here that goes into these two points. Then it's a little tricky getting it around this little thing here, but that kind of, you can move it around this, this slot here. And then the way these things work is that there's a tab on the bottom here. See how that tab, now that tab, this tab here prevents this from sliding around. But if you push the tab down, you can then, sorry, so I'm sure you're doing one -handed. Yeah, there you go. Now you can actually rotate the switch out, and it'll pop out like that. And that is the defective switch. This is the switch that is broken. It's a D3V16G3C25. And if you look up the exact replacement part, it costs $28. Now, if you look up that D3V number on Amazon, you can get for as little as $8. But actually, I found a local supplier of a micro switch that only charges $3. Uh, but the difference is you have to look at four things when you look at these switches. One is the size. 
physical size. Two is the amperage. So you see on the left here it says 16 amps. That's important. Third is the voltage, but they pretty much all say 125, 250 volts AC. And then the fourth is whether it's normally open or normally closed. And um, this one here, I'm moving it upside down. This one is a normally open switch. It's a little hard to see with this light. But um, so on this microwave, um, there's actually two of these, one here and then one here. And then there's another one down here. And this one is a uh, normally closed, so it's the opposite style. Um, the one I found locally here, this is not quite the right replacement. This is actually a, um, it's a 12 amp, 12 amp, um, and it's got both normally closed and normally open on it. So the, I can just use the uh, normally open side here, but uh, the important thing is that this is 12 amp. And actually it's a 1500 watt microwave, and so I know that 12 amps should be able to, to handle it, but I'd rather use the 16 amp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one in place of this one, because I know from both looking at the wires, which are very small wires, and looking at the schematics, this one doesn't handle very much power. Um, it's the one that down here that I'm replacing that handles all the power. You can see how big, bigger these wires are. So I'm going to take that one up there, put it down here, and then put this one in the place of the other one. Okay, so here's the new part in place of the upper switch, which is a low voltage switch, and it's a 12 amp switch, and I've got it connected to the normally open side, which is the one down here. And then the uh, this is the one that I didn't touch, and this is the one that I moved from the top. Again, this is a normally open switch, and this is 16 amps, so this is the one that handles most of the power, as you can tell by the wires going in there. So let's fire up and see what happens. Oh, one other small thing that um, you need to look at when you do these switches, and that is the size of the terminals here. These terminals are actually a little bit wider than the original terminal, so I had to spread these contacts a little bit wider, but it has a very nice snug fit, and so I'm not at all worried about those coming off. But you gotta make sure those, those contacts are gonna be tight on there. Okay, so, that switches in. Light comes on, light goes off. Turntable is now turning. Sign. Let's just wait a minute. See if this thing's actually heating up. And let's check it. Yep, we got warm water, so we're good to go. That's the the problem is those switches and. You can get a replacement for as little as $3 or as much as 30 up to you.